Good evening, everybody. Welcome. Thank you for joining me. As my name is Rosa Vasquez, and I'm welcoming you to the second episode of the ACG Social Mixer Show and Tell Summer Series for 2020. And if you don't know, this is the, if you weren't here for the first episode, or don't know anything about them. So ACG stands for Anime, Comic, and Game Social Mixer. So it's a local space, a community for creatives, artists, performers, entrepreneurs, fans, and enthusiasts of anything related to anime, comic, and gaming genre to mix and mingle, to promote their brand, who they are as an artist, their genre, and just to network with one another. So it's all about collaboration and networking for those in anime, comic, and gaming, and also cosplayers as well. So this is the second episode. So uh, why am I doing this? I, as a fan and creative myself, I thought it was a great space for those who are in love with this genre to just feel comfortable in a comfortable space just to promote who they are and share a little bit about themselves. So I want to introduce to you, before we introduce our second um, guest for the Show and Tell series, these episodes, this summer series is sponsored by Nerd Life Geek Life Instagram page. So please follow Nerd Life Geek Life for all things geek and nerd related, culture related, from pop culture, news, merchandise, and even conventions. And conventions do come back around. <laughs> Some are virtual going on. So be sure to follow him. So it's Nerd Life underscore Geek Life on Instagram page. So thanks for sponsoring this summer series. So I'm going to be bringing in my second guest. So his name is Sean Hill, goes by the name You Blinked on Instagram and as his artist name. So let me see if I can bring him in. Thank you for joining me, Chris. So let me um see if I can add him. Let's see. Oh, there he is. Thank you all for those who are coming in. And as I said, this is a nice social mixer space for those who are in the audience. So if you have any questions for myself or any questions, especially for our virtual event guests that come out every week in this summer series, please put them in the comment box below and I'll be sure to get to them throughout the remain, you know, throughout the session as well. And it's a good place for you to start if you want to network with them, get to know them also. Hey, what's up? Hey. How you doing? Hey, what's going on? Thank you for joining me. No problem. I'm introducing you and introducing the second episode of the ACG Show and Tell Social Mixer. So thanks a lot for tuning in. So it's my pleasure to introduce to you all Mr. Sean Hill. He goes by the name You Blinked. I said that right, huh? Hi, guys. How are you, you doing? Blinked, today? right? Yeah, You Blinked is it. Yeah, okay. Um, so Sean is an artist. He also creates custom graffiti wear, and he does illustrations as well. So Sean, we could start off by just um, tell us a little bit about yourself as an artist, and also you as a brand as a whole. Uh, so I'm, <laughs> I feel like I'm just a regular artist doing my thing, but uh, I'll give you a little background. So I started off. Um, I was drawn as drew as a little kid since so I was six years old. And, you know, throughout the course of my life, I kind of fell out of it. A um, couple of years ago, um, an associate of mine's uh, reignited that passion, and he got me into doing customized hats. Uh, it, was, it was different. I was working in Times Square, you know, doing custom work, doing a little bit of graffiti, really hard and difficult. And, uh, you know, now I'm at a point of, you know, moving on to other things. I do canvases, as you can see in the back. And um, I also do a little bit of workshops and a few things here and there, a bit of illustration, you know, just to expand my brand. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So tell us some of the uh, workshops you've done, because I know I've seen one you did recently with a couple of students at a local high school with some of your hats. Yeah. How's that experience been? And also for the youth who do it as well, how have they been receptive to it? Uh, it was a very eye-opening experience. Um, I had a little bit of time. It was like, I'll be honest, it was my first time doing something like that. Um, mm. My first time doing it, I was uh, too comfortable. Like, I just had to wing it. Um, uh, but I had an idea. So, you know, it's uh, it was more like 
patience and understanding. And, you know, I think a lot of, like, when I was dealing with the kids, they had a lot of expectations for themselves. And I kind of had to mm -hmm. follow that so that they were able to, like, get comfortable and do their thing and make sure they were having fun and not taking it too serious. You know, when people start mm -hmm. to take things a little too serious, they, like, hold themselves to a certain standard and they get upset about it. Uh, but it was fun. Mm -hmm. It was receptive. Everybody loved it. They asked for me to come back again. They told their friends to sign up for the class. It was uh, on my second time doing it at a way bigger group and more receptive. And, you know, um, I think I had like about maybe uh, 45 minutes for each class. But mm -hmm. it was fun. It was great. Um, taught me that I definitely don't want to be a teacher. But, uh, <laughs> but it was, it was Take a it from a teacher like me. Yeah, it's, it's a lie. You got to wear many hats. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I appreciate teachers. It's great. But like, it was like there was moments where, um, you know, uh, I'm a very direct person. And I realized mm -hmm. like bluntness was uh, damaging the future of America. <laughs> like you're, you're, like um, I, had a, I had a one moment where this young lady, uh, she wanted to do her own thing, right? Which is great. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm never trying to shut down anyone doing their own thing. But she was like, to I gave up my sketchbooks to show them like what I do besides the uh hats and you know how I set mm -hmm. up and and also I gave them um sketchbooks for their very own to to use to create and practice in and she found a piece in my sketchbook and she's like can I draw this on the hat and I'm like not enough time like just stick mm -hmm. with what I want to do and just follow the format I shut down after that and she ended up like her hat was, you know, good, but it was like, I know she could do better. But, you know, it was like one of those moments. But, you know, that was like one out of like, I think I saw like about 60 to 80 kids that day. So. Oh, wow. Yeah, it was like, I think I did. That's five. interesting because usually for a first day, you know, the interesting, as a teacher, I know when I do after school programs or I know programs that we bring into the school, numbers are very small. Like it'd be a miracle we get 10 kids that say, for it, so for you to get that many students in one go, that's interesting. That's great. I I believe my like I had five workshops that day, so I I had um like about let me see I think fifteen sixteen or so like first class fifteen sixteen next, then I think I had a little break or something like that, and then um I had four and like in one class, so that was very intimate. You know, more work was done, more conversation was um develop and then my last group was like about like about I'll say like maybe 25 30 maybe maybe less I'm again I might be exaggerated like can't remember the numbers it became a blur but um yeah <laughs> but it was large groups at the end like at, like but they all had like lunch so I had to deal with that like mm -hmm. um, I just I just um the energy and, um, and the, yep <laughs> yeah like but it was like uh, uh we want to make these hats but we're full so, it's, it's mm -hmm. so I had another question for you about the hats because you're one of the few that I, mean, I know personally, I'm sure there's others out there that do it, that do the art on the hat itself. So what yeah. made you decide to do that exactly? Uh, I, I'll be honest. It was like, I, I always wanted to do art, but I just kind of like, I didn't know where to go. I kind of fell out of art for a while and um, my associate got me back into it. He gave me a sketchbook and I was like, fill it back up and um, I got back into it from there. And then he was looking for people, you know, he was team members were leaving and doing their own thing and he was looking to replace the team mm -hmm. member. I remember the first time I, I went to work with him, I think I quit in three days. And then I spent six <laughs> months like asking to come back and work with him. And it was, it was, it was so interesting. And then um, after that, I remember I was like, I was doing promotions at the time. And I was mm -hmm. dealing with somebody and it was, I was like ready to punch him in the face. And I was like, yeah, I should quit. I should quit my like regular job and get back into doing some art. And it was just me, mm -hmm. you know, to do hats and not freaking out and like, um, you know, one step at a time. But, you know, from the hats, it moved on to other stuff like jackets, sneakers, uh, mm -hmm. canvases. I just did a, a, a nice little Kobe LeBron piece for someone. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's, it was just it was just the opportunity to do something different. That was it. I mm -hmm. was intrigued by doing something different. Mm. So I know just from hearing you telling a story about 
you know, your, your comings and goings and managing your angers and then realizing your true purpose and stuff. You know, it's really like a growth period. You know, it's a growth period that you went through, and it's amazing to hear how you found, like, something that, you're, that, gra- that you gravitated towards, that passion in that. I think the, the, the thing is, is like, um, I was just frustrated. It was just like dead end job, not going anywhere, uh, making okay money, not guaranteed, you know, it's promotion. So it's like, who comes in, you know, you could mm-hmm. have a good day one day and then a terrible day the next. And, mm-hmm. um, you know, um, I, I remember reading a, a, a book talking about, you got to choose your suffering, right? Mm. And um, a lot of people don't choose their suffering. So suffering chooses death. So mm-hmm. like that's where I was at with the whole working at, in the promotion field. I was just like tired, frustrated. And I just said, you know what? Let me throw myself into the art ring. And this is one of the ways I knew. And I and I, when I said like, I think, like I said, I spent three months just like, I'm going to work again. I'm going to work with you. I'm going to work with you. I like saying this to the person every day. And like mm-hmm. you know, finally one day it was like it happened. So. Great. Great. I want to talk to you also about your brand and your art. So, you know, everything has shifted with everyone during COVID. So how did you have to shift your brand and your art during this whole process? Is it still shifting? And, you know, (laughs) like, how did that work out? (laughs) Because everyone's sort of like in this phase of growth and experiment, which I'm doing with this social mixer virtually for the first time as well. Like, how did you come to an adjustment period for that? I don't think this is like this. I just don't think this adjusting is. It's more like adapting. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, I'll be honest. Like I'm still like trying to figure it out. I, I'm not gonna say like I got all the answers. It was just like, mm-hmm. what can I do? Um, I have paper. I have canvases. Um, I got hats and put. My, I gotta put myself out there. So that's what I kept mm-hmm. doing. You know, some things failed, some things succeeded. Um, you know, thankfully, I had really good customers, loyal customers that uh, came and um, and uh, invested in me as, uh, you know, asked me to do stuff for them, made sure I was okay during COVID. Um, yeah. You know, I had a good circle around me. You yourself was or one of those people. You know, mm-hmm. and I just kept working. You know, even when I wasn't working, I just kept painting or drawing and being creative and putting myself out there. Um, participated in um, events and you know, challenges. You know, to keep myself motivated. Uh, the most difficult part I found was um, hmm, was just like accepting where I was at. You know, a lot of people mm-hmm. in life they don't accept where they're at and they uh, get upset. Because like there's expectations, and you know you just gotta just gotta take it one step at a time, guys. Right? One step at a time. That's it. No, yeah, you made a good point about adapting, and it's like even if you're not creating at this moment, it's just like, even pausing for yourself and just finding you know yourself even in this moment, you where you are as a creator, where you are as a person, you know, and then also like you say, if you have the tools in front of you, even if you do one little thing at a time. And then eventually, you know, things will fall into place when it's meant to be. So you made such a great point there. Thank you. No problem. I wanted to also out. So I wanted to tell you, um, well, tell us about your art and your products. So is there any uh, merchandise you're currently selling you want to promote before I, we do the show and tell piece? Sure. I I mean, I have some canvases for sale right now. I have a few up. I was yeah, actually going to – I actually had st- stuff set up to do a live demo if you wanted to. But, you know, like – that's yeah, fine. Sure. It's fine. I'll just like show some artwork. Um, yeah, you still could do the live demo. Um, we'll do it probably in the next ten minutes. So oh yeah, that's not enough also. time. It's a, it's like going too much. It's, it's like going over top. Don't worry about it. It's probably okay. easy. so. This is one of my pieces I have up for sale. I'm having a little summer sale for my canvases. Um, mm-hmm. It's a piece I did for a uh, art show I was doing recently, but it's just been sitting in my house. Everything right now is kind of like about 50% off. I have mm-hmm. more more stuff to show, like the hats and stuff like that. But this is a few pieces. So if anyone mm-hmm. is interested, beautiful. Okay. And uh, the next one I'll show off is this one. So 
So yeah, all original, will deliver, I'll show up. <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> this, is, uh, this is some of the art pieces that I had here on stage. Um, but yeah, that's it. Great. Oh, thanks. Okay, great. You guys can also um, check out his Instagram as well and yes. see that if he has, you I know, he always stalkers. has the hats he's showing, merchandise as well. You know, yeah. like you said, he's doing a sale, summer sale going on, so be sure to check that out. So I want to jump into um, the show and tell segment, if you're okay with that. Sure. This point. I have some beautiful... So for those who are in the audience, so if you're joining us now, thank you for coming in. So this is the ACG show and tell summer series. I'm here with Sean Hill, known as You Blink. He's an artist and creative from the Bronx. He does um, art and illustration on canvases, from merch on merchandise as well, hats, jackets. He also does a couple of workshops, so if you're in education and you're looking for someone to do any kind of educational workshops in art and education, hit him up. Please so do. he'll be, so for those who are in the audience, feel free to leave any questions in the comments, mingle with the guests as well as he's doing his demonstration. He could do a Q&A as he's doing that. So I'll leave the rest to you. Some more show and tell? Cool. All right. Yes. So this is a piece I'm like working on right now. Um, it's a little Here. bit. Hold on, let me see if I can readjust. I was at, uh, yeah, sure. ready for this. Let me got me a nice little stand too. Um, nice. <laughs> let's slowly take this down, and we're there. Cool. Got it. If you guys have any questions while I uh, work on this piece, let me know. But uh, yeah. So how are you doing, Rosa? How's your day? Oh. So good, you know, just like during the day, I just tend to my kids and tend to myself, make sure I'm doing well. And I always look forward to the show and tells that I do each week. So it's exciting. It's a new venture for me, too, taking it virtually. Nice. Glad to hear that. So how was your last guest? Oh, it was Gary and um, Ed. Yeah, yeah I just had one comic. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, they talked about... Um, see one comics, how they met, how they started it, especially before internet and now how's it going with internet. So it's interesting to hear their stories from the early 90s and how they ventured out and, and met and was doing their workshops and spread with see one comics. Nice. And they shared a couple of their pieces as well, like what they're working on, projects they're working on. So tell us a little bit about this. Um, share with us like, some, Still, like what this piece is, what kind of materials you're using. So right now I'm using um, acrylic paints. Um, this piece is like, I wanted to do something where it was like a lady in the water, where she's oh. like, kinda like, you know, swimming, just like firefly, fire, fireflies around. Um, you know, mm -hmm. it's nice and peaceful and tranquil. Her just sitting down nice. there, like, sitting in the water, enjoying herself. You know. So for that background with the canvas, was that also acrylic as well? No, that was uh, spray paint. So I use um, mixed oh. media. So sometimes mm -hmm. I do a background with um, spray paint first, and then I'll um, uh, do acrylics on top of that. Like, uh, mm -hmm. like this piece is uh, spray paint. This uh, the swirls and the energy in this one, and that was done with spray paint. And then the, the lady was mm -hmm. done with acrylics, and then... Some of the the paint was um, is also oil, so that's why it has that gloss mm -hmm. shine on it. Mm -hmm. But yeah, but sometimes I I just like doing little pieces like this, and it's very relaxing, you know. Um, I do commission pieces as well. Um, mm -hmm. I think the last two pieces, like I said, one was a Kobe, the other one mm -hmm. was a uh, Star Fox piece from from mm, nice. a customer. But yeah. But when you do stuff like this, I, you know you don't you don't um you don't you don't take it a little like people take this stuff so serious. Like I ever mm -hmm. uh, every time I, I show first time artists or like or people with a little bit of artistic skill, they just like yeah, I don't I don't I don't want to mess it up, and they're just like <laughs> like so meticulous, and if they mess it up, they want to destroy the whole mm -hmm. thing. But with, mm. this, with these pieces, you just, like, you have fun with it. And, uh, you know, mm -hmm. if anything else, and 
if anything else and you don't feel like it's you know something that you're you're feel too strong about you guys correct it there's nothing wrong with that yeah right now, that's definitely true. It's actually interesting you say that about the correcting the mistakes because I was watching a YouTube video and that, you know, now a lot of artists are using computer now. Like, they have, like, their, I don't know exactly what it's called. Like, they have the canvas online and they can just easily yeah. undo it or press a button to erase it. So, if you think about that whole spectrum of, like, you know, when you make mistakes on paper versus, like, when you make mistakes on the computer itself. Yeah. Yeah, the the beauty, I think, I think that's a really good thing to be able to quickly make mistakes. But also, like, um, I was having a discussion about this earlier where we're getting to this really weird point where um, people aren't okay with making mistakes. Everything mm -hmm. has to be perfect. And I feel like that's the same thing with um, art as well. Um, that's the main thing when I was doing the workshop, I made sure to give the kids um, uh, a, a sketchbook, you know, mm -hmm. so they could plan and figure out what they want to do. And, um, and you know, like not worry about making mistakes either. Um, I met a group mm -hmm. of kids one time and they were like, we're all artists. And I was like, this is dope, great. And I pulled out my black book and they're looking through it. Oh my God, amazing. I was like, where's your black book? And they were like, I, we, we don't have one. We do everything mm -hmm. on the computer. And I was like, what if your computer breaks tomorrow? Like, what would you do? Mm -hmm. Like, you know, like, like, look at this situation. Like, say you on the train and somebody, you tell somebody your artist and they're like, where's your art sketchbook or whatever. Maybe they want to offer you a job. How could you get that? How would you mm -hmm. be able to like get those things? And, um, mm -hmm. A lot of people like really don't think about that. Like everything is so instant. There's no like, mm -hmm. I, I, maybe that's me being a little old school as well. Like I think about like gratification. Like, mm -hmm. like there's, there's a bit of like joy in doing something physical. I feel like when you do something on a computer, you know, it's click, 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 and mm -hmm. you don't you don't get to feel like the weight of the brush. And eh, this is just me. Everybody's no, no, I feel you too, because I'm the same way too. Like, I don't do many audio books or books on, like, the tablet. Mm -hmm. I like that feel of the actual paper and the heavy book as well on the pages. And just knowing that, you know, okay, how much progress I've made. I can see it, you know, physically see that progress. So sure. I'm sure the same thing is with art as well, just being something tangible that you can feel. And it's not quick and that I could easily be you know, deleted, you know, you're seeing your progress as you go through many ways. Yeah. Like, like, that's the other thing too. Like you said, tangibility. I think that's what causes people to value things more too. Right. If mm -hmm. it's on a computer and you know, click, 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 you could print it up as many times as you want. There's really no value there. Mm -hmm. But when you have something that's original and it's one time, one piece, there's no one else mm -hmm. that would have this other piece. You learn to value it a little bit more. You're like, Wow. All right, there's nothing else like this out there. It's just me and mm -hmm. the original piece. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I hope you guys can see that. Like it's coming together yep. a little bit. You know. But um So with the so with this with these layers of acrylic, how many have you done so far? Uh so so what I did is uh I spray painted it, I sketched out the image that I wanted to do, and then um from there on, I'll, I'll just start working with the acrylic, and then usually I'll like, I'll, I'll stick with the acrylic, and then I'll start shifting into different uh, mediums. So I might go ahead and do oh, spray great. paint again, and uh, I might use some oil base markers or oil paint to give it a little bit mm -hmm. of a gloss and a shine, different feels. Um, yeah, just depends. It really depends on how I feel uh, coming into mm -hmm. this piece. All right, that's good. That's guess that's a great thing also about like you're doing this and at the same time you're learning like I might change it up, you know, I might not even keep it in the same format, you know, or yeah. same way. I th I think uh we like sometimes in art people commit to things so hard because the the uh the is um they commit to this idea in their head, right? And then um because they commit to this idea to their head, they can't let it go. 
So now mm -hmm. when something goes wrong, they get anxious, upset that it doesn't come out the way that they want it to come out because it's an idea in the head. More like instead mm -hmm. of like, like um there's a there's a thing a friend said to me, he's like, um, everybody has a roadmap, but nobody knows the terrain. And I feel like mm -hmm. painting, painting and doing art is the same thing. Like you got this roadmap to this um idea that you have in your head. But then when you really gotta do it, you really don't you gotta just go with the flow. Mm -hmm. That's just it to me. No, that's a good viewpoint, good perspective on it. We 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 don't don't worry. Everybody does it. It's not like just a, it's it's not just a a, a, a artist thing. Like even yeah like, yeah of course. Like even so, like you go like I keep asking people like this. Like, what's the when have you ever in your life arrived exactly to something where you needed to be? Like when somebody mm -hmm. makes an appointment for four o'clock, right? You had to show up like a couple minutes early or maybe a minute late, maybe two minutes late. Like you never hit mm -hmm. anything exact. You don't go and freak mm -hmm. out and be like, oh my God, whatever. You just like, okay, this is the, 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 this is where what I hit. It's not the bullseye, but once I get it within that space, I'm good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So as you're doing this, I uh, wanted to know a little bit about the beginnings of your art. So, like, I know you put on your bio, you think the first thing you drew was a Smurf. Uh, <laughs> what else do you remember from your early art days? I remember the first piece I really committed to was a Smurf, right? Like, I've never mm -hmm. seen that, right? So, um, after that, I was really into comic books. So, I kept drawing a lot of comic book guys. Like, I was, you know, I grew up in the 90s. So, like, I had a lot of influence, like Todd McFarlane, Rob Liefeld, all those guys. So I used to draw a lot of mm -hmm. comic book stuff. I used to enter like art competitions. Um, did a lot of pieces. I did a lot of pieces back in school. Like I think that was my strongest subject was art. And then mm -hmm. um, when I, uh, I I originally started off in Barbados, and then when I moved to America, I started doing a lot of pieces. Uh, I started doing a lot of work here too. I I think I have a piece in the Bronx DA office, uh, mm -hmm. the UN. Um, I also did, I keep saying, um, that's not good. <laughs> to me, um, <laughs> uh, I, I did Cooper Union Saturday program and that also opened me up to other artists and, um, a lot of creators and helped me get ready for college prep and then life happens and, you know, you kind of fall out of it and, uh, now I'm getting back into it. I feel like this is mm -hmm. like, I, I, I'm at a better place in my life to, commit to something like this where you're younger you're like you don't know you just want to have fun you're running around and then mm -hmm. like, you get older you're like you didn't do what you wanted to do and i think a lot of people mm -hmm. do that in their life too not judging or mm -hmm. anything like that like uh what was right. it that you wanted to do oh funny you say that because i actually um when i went into college the first year I went into City Tech, QD City Tech, and I went into art and advertising design. And one of my oh, first you, classes you was... You went to two schools, <laughs> the two same schools together. You went to Uvada, I oh, went yeah. to Uvada. I went to City Tech, too. I went, <laughs> that's hilarious. <laughs> yeah, so I went there, and I was, like, thinking, okay, maybe I want to do this, and I didn't know what to prepare for, and... As soon as they hit me with, uh, here's the supplies you got to get. And this is at the time when Pearl Paint was still open. And um, it was like post, it was actually pre-9-11. So I think yeah. it was maybe May of 2001 or like August 2001 around there. I went to Pearl Paint and I was like, how much is all this stuff? And I got my syllabus and, oh, my God, I was not prepared with, like, how much all this supplies are going to cost me and then going into the class and seeing how you know I saw how much better other people were and I was like oh because I actually was interested in going into computer animation so in the beginnings early 2000s there was no such thing of like now there's so much game, video game programming and video game like I did that program there at City Tech oh. I did the uh, yeah it was a lot of courses there. yeah 
Yeah, they didn't have that at the time when I was there. I went there in 2001, and they wasn't even in existence. It was really more of like, I don't even think graphic design was a, a course there yet. It was really just more of like art advertisement of like how to take art, make advertisements out of it, done. Simple like one-on-one stuff of like life drawing, things like that. So it kind of like gave me a sense of a shock of like, wow, I didn't know so much went into the art, you know, art. So it was awakening to me. And then I went into another path, you know, I went into social services, working with education, but I never gave up just that passion of like the appreciation of art. And so I went recently to um, last year when I went to the city and I went to one of um, Unbound Story uh, events. That's the people that we had the Halloween Yes. Social, yes, the Halloween it. social mix of it, yeah. Yes. So, yeah, they did their live draw, and they got me to draw. They were like, oh, you want to draw? I was like, me? I was like, yeah. I was like, oh, my God, I haven't drawn since 2001. I said, okay, I'll give it a shot. So it was really interesting to, like, do that again, even if it was a simple sketch and the amount of time of doing, like, a life drawing cosplay type of sketch. Was, it was really interesting to feel that again. So it really never kind of, like you said, don't leave you, you know, yeah. especially if, you're, you know, if you had a passion for it or some kind of art form for it, you know, there's an appreciation for it still there. Yeah. I, I mean, like, you... The thing is, is, like, you're you're after it, at least, and, and in some shape and form. I think what it is is, like, a lot of people... Um, this is just my opinion. They give up. Not, and, and I don't mean, like, just, like, they just put it in the back burner. But you can find other ways to do it. You can go and like mm-hmm. find other artists that that um, you want to promote and sponsor. You can go and do. You can you could write stories for other people to create. You could go and create a publishing firm. You could go and do a whole bunch of other things. Um, what what is it? I, was, I heard this one time. It was like you know you ever heard the term the road less taken? Mm-hmm. Right. There's no such thing. You get to create your own mm-hmm. road. Right. Yep. So you build your own road and you figure out how to do it. Like it's like people like I'm watching so many people grow online. Like there's people out there um building comic book publishing companies. Not because they're great artists, but they want they want to see the medium grow. There's people that yep. do cur- curations. Uh I I build galleries, like make sure there's programs out there that other artists can flourish and grow. Um that's one of my my hopes for this year, but like that one was like COVID just like boom, punch you in the face. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, um, like uh, me personally, like um, I'm a member of the last interview we did, the written one. Mm-hmm. I really wanted to do a, um, a gallery show for like young black artists. Not in fact, let me just not not just profile it like that. Just young male artists, like um, right, yeah. Like I feel like like they don't get enough shine. Nobody mm-hmm. like like tell me who's your favorite young male artists now you can't even say that right like Mm -hmm. there's not really too many shows like that like there's the shows for everything else everything has like some type of representation but there's really hardly any shows for like young men to show off their talent and Mm -hmm. it's not something that's praised too much either right you know i heard people like oh my god this all you're, you're gonna do well you're gonna have a future there you know you gotta have a clothing line you gotta have this like, it's, mm. you got to be an influencer, but, like, just to be mm. an artist and just make a living, like, you don't really hear too much of that. You have to have, like, 20 other talents mm-hmm. besides the mm-hmm. art. But, uh, I want to... Yeah. Go you... no, ahead. No, you were saying No, yeah, that's so true. Yeah. It's so true. It's like, you know, it, it's like one of those things I think about myself growing up and that there was no art in the music kind of program whatsoever. And if it was, it was really more assembly like kind of things, you know. And interesting to know that that's something that we strive for, that we've always had, you know, in our communities and even you. Yeah. And for someone like you, you know, who eventually, you know, you came to the Bronx, you've been raised here, you know, it's something you saw growing up and you want to give back. You want to give that back. I'm, I'm going to be honest. Like, I... My time, my early days in the Bronx was not fun, and uh, but I still loved it. Like I learned a lot of stuff over here. You know, like uh, I used to go to this martial arts school on two thirty third, 
do Taekwondo mm-hmm. there. Um, you know, my my teachers were amazing, and they lived in the Bronx, right? You know, like like my mm-hmm. art teacher was amazing. She always set me up for every program, everything to make to like help me progress. Um, okay. I had a theater art teacher that was very like she was all about it. She, you know, um, I had good teachers around me, so I feel like we need that now more than ever. Like everybody's more mm. now. Like, I remember I was talking to this kid the other day, and he was like, "Yeah, you should follow me when I'm famous." And I was like, "For what? Mm-hmm. Not nah, just be famous." I'm like, "For what? Like, what? What is your goal?" And I think that's the, yeah. the like a lot of people now like. They don't know what they want, or they don't know why they want to go down um, a certain mm-hmm. path, or why you want fame. Mm-hmm. You know, um, I don't want. I don't want fame. I want. I just want. Hmm, I do want notoriety, but I don't want to be famous. I, like me having a few mm-hmm. people enjoy my art pieces or buy my product is pretty good for me. But uh, I just mm-hmm. want to keep creating. Uh, you know, mm-hmm. and um, you know, like I, I would tell this to anybody, like. I'm choosing the, the the hard path, which is just commit mm-hmm. to art a hundred percent. Like if you don't need to do that, go and get a nine to five. Pay you know, take care of yourself. Like you know, don't don't make the nine to five your your life now. You know, find something yeah. that, that pays your bills. But you know, focus on your art that way, so that you don't have mm-hmm. to like, worry. You know, as a creative, you do need some type of uh, stability. And uh, mm-hmm. but for me, like. Um, I'm doing okay, but I still have to worry from time to time. And that's the price I'm mm-hmm. willing to pay for my art. But, um, you know, if you don't have to, you know, go work a good, go have a nice, decent job and focus on your art that way too. When you come home, commit. But you got work. Mm-hmm. work. That's it. Commitment. Yeah. Yes, the dedication and commitment is key. No matter what path you took in life, that's so important. And I also think you hit the nail on the head too when you mentioned te- the teachers you had, the value that they gave you. So tell me a little bit about that as well. Like, why do you think, because um, I feel like teachers get now, like, a bad rap, and, like, not everyone goes to, like, like oh, I think about my teacher and thank them for that. Uh, besides teachers, there are other people in your community or in your life that kind of shape you to pursue this? I, I'll be honest. Like, okay, so my teacher was this white lady from, like, Westchester, mm-hmm. and... She never used to curse. She would always say like sugar or fudge, or something. Like she's a, she was this nice white lady, but she always made sure that um, whenever there was an art competition or something, I was up for it or uh, mm-hmm. art opportunities because she saw I was committed to it. And you know, mm-hmm. like, and that's the thing. Like, I think I think a lot of people um, don't want to be pushed. Especially, I see this younger generation. Everybody's like, you know, you don't need to push them. You don't need to think. And and me too. I was just like, you know, I'm a millennial, so I was like, oh, I don't want to do that. And she was like, No, Sean, just do it. And I was like, All right, okay. But I was like committed to this thing. And and um, I think a lot of people don't understand the difference between being encouraged and somebody putting pressure on you. And everything mm-hmm. nowadays is pressure to people. Like you ever see somebody like. Yo, you should follow up on that. Now nah, you put a pressure on me. I don't want to pressure. Mm-hmm. And then like mm-hmm. you don't put pressure on them and like, why well, you didn't let me do that thing? And you're like, mm. like, it was there for you. And the other thing that yeah. other people do is um they look at everything as a problem instead of a learning lesson. Like mm. I mean, like some of my mentors I don't get along with anymore. But I don't mm-hmm. I don't not I'm not grateful that they taught me anything. You know, I'm there's I I wouldn't I wouldn't say a bad thing towards them. I I mean I've had my moments where I was younger and I I would like curse them or whatever. You know, talk bad. I'm not, I'm not perfect. But nowadays I look back at it and I was like, yo, thank you for being that person. Thank you for showing me this. Thank you for doing this, you know. And I think everybody wants a smooth sailing. You know, I talk to mm-hmm. younger younger artists and I like give them tips and they're like, I know what to do. I know what to I I know how to handle that. I know what to be about. I know how to deal with this. And I'm like, when you have that I know method, like nobody wants to tell you anything. Mm-hmm. And sometimes that's a good thing to do too. Sometimes, you know, go make your mistakes, but sometimes there's mistakes that cost you a career that you could have. And I've been down that road. I've I've worked with um 
I remember this one person I worked with, he wanted to do a comic book. Mm-hmm. And um, I was trying to explain to him, like, there's a difference between a movie script, because he had a movie script and he wanted to make it into a comic book so he could sell it as an idea to get the movie done. Right? Mm. So I was like, explaining to him, like, listen, man, this is a script. This is like a page. A page for me is a, a page for you is a minute in a movie, right? Mm. Page to me is maybe like two, three pages mm-hmm. of artwork. So you're giving me this much of a script. I'm going to make you a 400 graphic novel that nobody's going to read. You need to mm-hmm. cut it down, fix the dialogue, find out what's important. Oh, I don't want to do that. And it was so much hell because it was like, like one, he didn't want to readjust the script. Two, he kept looking at other artists and wanted me to draw like them. And every time I'd be like, Oh, the comparing game. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so yeah. I was like, yo, I'm okay with leaving, you know, like, and that kind of, like, it was so bad, like, it left me a bad taste in my mouth. I didn't want to work with people mm. like that. So I kind of, like, opted out of drawing. And I was just going through some life stuff, and I was just like, ugh. Mm-hmm. But you know what? I, I never stopped. I, I had notebooks full mm. of sketches, but I really didn't commit too much until I got older, you know? Mm-hmm. And sometimes that's, like, like, there's no problem with that. Like, people keep, like, I always see people, hear people talk about regrets, like, oh, I regret that I didn't do it when I was younger. And I'm like, no, you can do this right now. Uh-oh, I'm getting messages. Anyway, <laughs> I was like, look, you can <laughs> you can do this this like later in your life, you know, like uh, Ridley Scott, right? Didn't make, I think he didn't make um, Aliens. And that's his first feature film until he was like 50 or something like that. Uh-huh. And, uh, you know, like, that guy was making car commercials for like art, like commercials for most of his life before he actually made a feature film, and like people mm. don't people don't want to go through the 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 growing pains as they call them. That's the yeah. word I was looking for. You know, they yep, want to be exactly. yeah, they want to be famous, mm. and not only that, <laughs> and then more messages. Uh, not only that, right? The uh, crazy part is is like. Um, about the growing pain part is like, they don't, they think that something's gonna go a certain way and that's it. Like uh, I've heard stories of like, professional artists just blowing all their money like that they get because they sold this one painting and they're like, I'm famous. And I'm like, yeah, that's not a good idea. Like (laughs) you sold one painting and you think, (laughs) guess I'm very pretty popular at this time of day. So you think like you, um, you're, you're, you're famous now because you sold this one painting. And then Mm -hmm. after that, you think that all your paintings is going to sell at this price. So now you blow up the price of your paintings and then now nobody's buying your paintings and you're pissed off and you're upset and you're like, uh, and now you stop being an artist because the idea in your head is gone. Mm -hmm. So, so I just, again, um, just be realistic about what you want to do. Like me, I, I, I really don't have anything much. I've, I'm, I've, I've done a lot of different stuff. I've been, um, I worked for a comedy club. I did promotions for them. I worked for nightclubs. Uh, I, I did a lot of jobs where it was free. Like there was a bit of commitment, not too much commitment. It was like, I don't like, I didn't like nine fives. Um, work at pizzeria, worked at a martial arts school. Um, was, was, I did video all games. All those experiences, or... you know, all those yeah. experiences lead to who so you are now. They're all important, <laughs> you know. All yeah, those yeah, the road are important. Yeah, that's why I'm not really shy about talking right now on the screen. You know, like, like artists aren't really, like, I meet other artists that they can't communicate. Not, not, not downplaying them. Mm-hmm. Like, they're not really, like, uh, big talkers or anything like that. Um, but, yeah, what uh, <laughs> is called me. But, uh, you know, it's, uh, uh, thank you for putting me on, too, Rosa. Uh, I appreciate this. But, um, oh, of course. Yeah, a lot of people like have these expectations they had, and then when they're not realized, they like give up. But it, it's, it's, a, mm-hmm. it's, 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 it was a long, tedious road. You know, um, what is it? Van Gogh didn't sell anything until. Mm-hmm. Yep. Exactly. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna keep working on this while we talk. Do you have any more questions or? 
No, go ahead. You know, you said some interesting points. You know, I love it. I'm going to let you do your thing. Yeah. So those of you who are just joining, thank you for joining. And if you do have any questions for our guest, Sean Hill, also known as You Blink, please put them in the comments below. Also, this episode will be available on Instagram TV later today. You can also post your comments on there as well. Any questions you have, maybe you want to hit them up as well and send in your information too. Don't be shy to do that. So right now he's working on a various kind of painting. You say you're going to do acrylics, you got to do some spray paint, some oil. So we're interested to see how this turns out. He was gracious enough to do a live demonstration drawing here for us. I want everybody to have fun. You know, that's my motto. Have fun and the money will come. Mm-hmm. Exactly. <laughs> you also can find a little bit about Sean. I do, once in a while, I do these Get to Know Me series. Sean was on there and he answered a few questions there as well. So you can get to know a little bit more about him also there. Oh, cool. Um, if you have any more questions, feel free to ask. Um, I think yeah. my audio just got readjusted because everybody's been trying to call me. So let me see. Oh, I hear you. We, we hear you good. Oh, I think I it went low when they were trying to call you, but now it's back to normal. Oh, good. Thank you. Oh, okay, thanks. I'm glad to hear that. <laughs> so with this kind of canvas, how, like, how much time does it usually take you, or days, for example? Uh, it depends. Like, uh, it depends on how much I want to commit to it. Sometimes I, I sit down and draw for like um, maybe an hour or so. But then when I really want to commit to a piece or for a client, I do like maybe um, 10 hours plus mm -hmm. that from start to finish. Um, I was uh, listening to this, uh, this uh, YouTube video talking about something called deep work. Mm -hmm. And it's like, we all do like this, um, you know, uh, short term work and deep work, right? So short term work mm -hmm. is like me sketching in the morning, like just doing mm -hmm. five second sketches, warming up, getting loose doing a quick drawing, nothing too serious, right? Mm -hmm. Those are great for practices. But then deep work is like committing to one piece and getting deeper mm. and deeper into it and getting lost into the piece. And uh, I started mm. doing that like uh, last year um, in the winter time. So I would sit down mm -hmm. and then I'll start a piece like around like, oh, we can work out, <laughs> work out, um, do some other stuff is my audio okay now somebody was calling again yep i hear you okay <laughs> i hear you so um i was doing some um audio sorry audio so i would get up in the morning work out do like some stuff and then um i'll get into a piece and i'll commit to it for mm -hmm. like six seven hours straight no breaks no mm -hmm. getting up no running away i'll probably put on some music or something in the background i just focus on that piece and uh, mm -hmm. just put my all into it. So it got me, that's really been helping me with the canvases as well. When you start to mm. do stuff like that and commit to it, um, you get you, you get more out of it. It's like writing, you know, like sometimes uh, mm -hmm. you, uh, you know, you write a little something or jot down a note, but then when you start writing your thoughts out and putting it down on paper and just not, not caring about what, but just getting it out. Right. You'll like, like totally uh, do more, you know? Mm -hmm. And a lot of people like, uh, it's like, like, I was reading, um, uh, I'll show you the book. Mm-hmm. Here we go. So there's this, this beautiful book here called The uh, War of Art. War of Art. Mm -hmm. And it's all about um, resistance. Like, like mm -hmm. um, most people create resistance in their life whenever they're creating, right? Mm -hmm. So you find some reason not to do the thing that you need to do. So mm -hmm. you'll um, like, so like he explains that resistance could be beaten. I'm trying to find a nice little piece here. Uh, oh, I'm skipping stuff. Anyway, <laughs> but uh, no, he kind of explains like Thanks. how. Um, good recommendation. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> How uh, resistance is uh, is found in different ways. Whether it's like, you ever sit down to do something and be like, "Oh, I didn't eat today," 
and just get up and start eating, that's resistance. Mm -hmm. That's mm. Re resisting committing to the process. Or are you just like, mm -hmm. oh, what else did I did it do? Like a random thought. And you let out a thought come and take over the whole experience. That's resistance as well. Wow, oh, interesting. So doing that, so with you're sitting down, you're doing your art, it's almost very like meditative and therapeutic, you know, especially if you get lost in it and for hours on end and, you know, avoid that resistance, which is, it takes a lot of practice. I know for me, when I do my meditations and I do my mindfulness, it does take practice. You know, the more you do it, the more you practice, I'm sure art, you get better at it. So avoid those resistances. Yeah, very true. Um, I would say, I, I think that's also the other thing um, with art. I have, I have this weird thing that happens when I uh, do hats in front of people. Because, you know, mm -hmm. I sit down and draw. I will see people just slide mm -hmm. next to me and just watch me. And they'll mm -hmm. be like, are you okay with this? And I'm like, yeah, I'm fine. And they're like, well, I'm, just, I'm just into it. I, I'm very, mm. I'm enjoying this. And they come relax and they talk and communicate. Yeah. They, they get yeah. involved and it's um mm. it's it's a it's it's very therapeutic i think a lot of people like that's why i tell people don't take it so serious whenever mm -hmm. it comes to the workshops or even just wanted to create something or paint or sometimes like I, like i remember one day um i was drawing on the train and these like two twin girls were twin girls were like on the train and they was just like we want to draw your book and i was like go ahead and they just sat down yeah. and enjoyed themselves. And everybody was enjoying themselves. And it was just this relaxing moment. And it was just really good. Like, just to let somebody do and create whatever they wanted to. There was no commitment mm -hmm. or you didn't put this pressure on yourself. And I think we do mm -hmm. that throughout life all the time. And maybe the one place is art that you can do that freely. Like, not to commit too much. Yes, of course. We got, like, about seven or six minutes before Instagram decides to kick us out because I guess it was no about problem. an hour I, time. I did my demo. But, um, I'll probably finish it up. Yeah, sure. I would love to see it. You post it up on your Instagram page. If you want to see the finished product, please go to his Instagram page. But before you go, yes. I want to ask you two more questions. First question is one question just in regards to my mission and vision of collaborating. And you've answered this before, but just, you know, just to say it vocally is how do you envision collaboration for your brand and your art? So when I, so moving forward, I, I, I had to really think about this, especially now in like 2020 and, and uh, yeah. this whole like COVID era and just watching like, it's really interesting to watch how people behave when the pandemic hits, right? Mm -hmm. Like it's the type that you really notice who your friends are and all, allies are. So moving forward, I, I think I'm going to, to when I collaborate, I think I, I said this before, but I try to figure out how I can work with the person and what they want. That's usually what okay. I ask, right? What okay. do you want from me? And I think okay. moving forward, if somebody can't answer that simple question, um, I just know we'll work with them. Because it's okay. just like, like as an artist, people like want you to create the thing for them. They don't know what they want. They're not specific. Okay. They're not to the point. They're... Um, they're, they they love that you can create stuff, but they want it to benefit them, and that's not a collaboration. Mm. That's you being you. Exactly. Right. Like mm -hmm. if you go if um if I move forward and I'm collaborating with people, like I was talking about a, a collaborative piece that I was doing today, and mm -hmm. uh, you know it was very chill. It wasn't too much pressure. It was like this is what I want from you. You can do whatever you want, and that sometimes are that's the best collaborations to me. Like you can mm -hmm. be free will. Let me do what I want, but also like you can put a little input too. You know, I'm mm -hmm. not locked down to to uh, your restraints or whatever ideas you have. Mm -hmm. there. All right, it's definitely true. Um, so thank you so much for joining us, Sean. I think this was an amazing talk. Hearing your perspective as it, both an individual and as an artist, and was yeah. uh, so. Where can viewers reach out to you and follow you? Uh, yeah, you can check me out on you Blink. Um, U B L I N C D. Um, I'm on Facebook and Instagram. Uh, that's the platforms I'm using right now. Uh, you know, it's quick to the point. Um, you can email email me through there. You can DM me if you want something customly done. Uh, oh yeah. So we also like we talk about the hats, but I didn't even get to show up one. 
So yes, yes. <laughs> this kind of stuff I do on the hats, you can check it out. You know, Rosa, again, thank you for having me. I appreciate this so much. Yes, thank you this so much. Yes. So this was fun and um thank you so much. Thank you those in the audience for joining as well. If you missed the beginning of this, you can catch it on Instagram TV. This episode will be up there shortly. And be sure to follow it. Sean. And yes, you'll see Sean there on You Blink. Oh, Gary just came on. He said he wants that hat. <laughs> <laughs> you you can tell you know you you got my contact, man. You can give it any time. <laughs> yep. Oh, thank you so much. So I also have more in the Instagram TV description. Thank you so much, Sean, and everybody else. I'll thank see you. you next week. Take care. Have a good day. Bye.